Okay, so we've got that three by three, and that's our DCV. Now the next thing we want to do is just kind of imagine here, some, I think you were all on the trainer, and I'm drawing these in for your just eyeballs, okay? Just I'm in the center. Remember there were four connections to the valve, in, out, or P and T, and A and B. And I'm using, the reason I did a three by three box is now I've got the lines to use. So I'm just gonna go in a little bit and show a closed center. And if you wanna draw that. And actually, uh, probably I'm gonna encourage you to do this much more. Because then, you know, if changes so. need, right? Um, now, what's misunderstood sometimes are the arrows, and sometimes even in the e-learning you're doing or the books, they get it wrong. Because books start with an engineer or a technician who knows something. They write something and draw something. Then it goes to the graphics department who don't know all the subtleties of the meaning of these symbols. And so sometimes, the crisscross arrows will end up way in the corner. But then they don't match the ports we just hooked up. Pneumatic valves have five-way connections and they get very confusing when they're not drawn in the right spot. So in my brain, I want this to line up, but that'll obviously be here and here, here and here. So I'm just going to do a straight arrow on the top one going that direction and a straight arrow coming back if you'll draw that too there's a general nomenclature that uh, ever since computers have been created the world's been decaying in accuracy used to be somebody wrote something it's on a typewriter, editor would read it, give back corrections, they retype it, etc. Now we all have word processors, we can be an author. But we don't know grammar, punctuation, we, right? Everybody has CAD, they can draw something, and then they don't draw it correctly. So some of the, uh, one of the standards used to be uh, that solid arrows were hydraulics, hollow arrows are pneumatic. You'll see some manufacturers don't even obey that anymore because they've turned the job over and over. I've got a brother who's two brother-in-law's engineers. They had a whole semester in just writing the alphabet, the A, B, C. Those are original blueprints. There's no way to confuse one character to another. So then there's not mistakes. Shuttle O-ring sizes, stuff like, oh, who cares whether we put the slash or mistakes happen because it wasn't accurate. Okay, now down here, I'm kind of going to put a target just for discussion, and I know I want to crisscross, so the top is going to go down here. And likewise, the return arrow is going to go here. Now, I'm not giving you straight edges. A schematic, or anything you do, should be able to be read Can I use yours for an example? The questions are, is it legible? Do I get what's here? And I certainly do. Then it's good, okay? You'll have to make changes in fields sometimes. You put your name by. You need to use the standard symbols and make them legible. You don't have to have a template. You just need something legible that people can read, okay? So. This is the first part. Now, I'm going to add the, the next part. What is this box, these three boxes called together? What is this thing in hydraulics? DCV. A DCV, which stood for directional control valve. control valve. Okay? So, except what's missing on this DCV? There's a couple things missing. There's a spring, and what is the spring for? Keep it centered. 
what makes it move out of center? We don't have the operator or the lever, right? And different operators, so I'm going to put a box here. They're very simple drawings. There's a lever. Now that's called an operator. It could be a solenoid that a, a PLC or electric circuit tells it to move. Okay. Now, this lever is assumed to be able to move this thing back and forth. Okay. Um, but to come back, it's going to need a spring down here and a spring up here. Okay, so just a kind of a zigzag type of thing. One of the problems being a technician, I will tell you, is we like to see it work. We don't want to think, we just want to start the machine. We just like things that run. Then we learn about, oh, you should have maybe made sure the load was secure before you took off. But I'll continue the pattern as I'll go right to the what we're going to do with this. Now, I'm going to draw a cylinder, except the cylinder I want you to not draw yet. The connection to a cylinder is a little bit in, so I don't want to be on the line when I draw the box. So I'm going to draw my cylinder here off the line. I can end on a line. Then I'm going to draw in the piston. Then I'm going to draw in the connections. This is where the oil flows in or out. Okay? So I've moved it up in a little bit away so I've got some room. Okay? And so go ahead and duplicate something like that. Is the glare from the windows bothering or is it acceptable? Okay. Now, one of the rules in drawings, in electrical, in most prints, there are usually no curves, no squiggly lines. Everything's 90 degrees or straight, 180 or, or, or 90. So I'm going to kind of take this point and see that, oh, it's going to go there. So I'm going to draw a straight line out and then go up. Then I'm going to do something different on the second line. I'm going to go out a little bit on the second line to get away from the valve. Then I'm going to drop down. Then I'm going to go over. And again, I got to kind of see where my endpoint is. So that then we have this DCB hooked up to a cylinder, double ended cylinder. And you've probably seen the animation that shows fluid comes in. Now, um, in this end and goes back. What we what we do have right now though is a mystery. Where does this get energy to come from? How does it move? Right? We've hooked up the cylinder to a DCV, 
but we haven't hooked up the DCV. Now, Charles, one of the things that I'm going to add that your first drawing didn't is where is the power supply? Where is the pump, the relief valve? Because that's usually part of it. The amateur lessons will say, oh, just draw the manifold, those four ports where you hook the hoses or the return. Okay? Um, but we want to draw that in. So I need to do a couple things. I need to plan a little bit of distance away. And now I kind of have here, I, I want to put a relief valve over here. So I'm going to do a box that's three. Uh, let's see, where's my three? Now, that's a, that's a couple squares off the left edge, not that you have to count, but that's where I am. Sorry, I'll, I'll zoom back out. So I put that way over there. Now I'm going to discover I drew the box wrong, so we'll get to erasing that in a little bit. Okay? So I should have drawn my line over. And we'll end up erasing this box and moving it up and down. You can leave it there for now. Okay? Now just kind of in the middle-ish I'm going to draw down a line. And this one I want you to watch and then draw in after I do it. Okay? So what I'm going to draw is way down here is a circle that's about about two squares big, something like that. I'm not measuring, but this is a symbol for a pump. Then out of the pump, I want to have a, f a filter. And sometimes when you look on a schematic drawing in the back of your Kemp book, when you get that, or you'll see on the blue sheets over there, you'll see this symbol, and they didn't put in the edges. What I mean by the edges is this. the little tabs. See, what it's showing is, see the dotted line? That's the filter the oil has to go through. But if you had it flipped 90 degrees, it wouldn't be going through anything. Okay? But when you see it standing alone, you can't really... T and that's a one a graphic artist may mount it the other way on the screen, and you go, oh, I guess it goes this way. Okay, so we're going to label these, and then I'm going to put in a baseball, that's what I call it, and that's a flow meter. Okay, so if you'll now try and draw those three objects in. say, boy, I got my full meter kind of a small circle. Next time you draw it, it's a little bit bigger. My filter is a little wonky. I got that a little bit small. Okay? They kind of have relatively standard sizes in all the prints, that 3x3. Three three. They break the rules sometimes, but, okay. you know. We don't like to have you do a lot of rework for rework. You're going to draw more than one print. So we will say, 
add that to it next time. Okay? Make sense? Because it's not great learning going on. It's just, oh, next time do this. Okay? So now, I'm going to look at this device, and um, I need this to be a flow path. So I need to make this go. So one, two, I gotta, I gotta think about one below. So I'm moving it up one. So it's coming into the bottom line. Yep. And I'm going to add the rest of the symbol so you can see it. The arrow actually is going to be above it. Okay. So this one here, it's not coming straight in. It should be, the flow line should be one plus, one little square above. And on this side, I want to put a spring. But we're going to do something different after you do the spring. It's a spring with a knob. It's adjustable. So we draw a diagonal arrow through it. And that arrow in electrical and hydraulic and pneumatic means it's adjustable. There's something you can tweak. A needle valve would have that symbol. Okay. Now, these black lines we've been drawing are called conductors. As an electrical, they carry the electrical current in the wire. In the hoses, they carry the oil. They conduct the energy from one place to another. Okay? Then there's different types of conductors. In electrical, we might have something like a power that's coming in to run a system. And we might have a little thermostat wire that is sensing something. And sometimes they like to distinguish what the purpose of the conductor is. Okay? So um, one of them is called a pilot. And a pilot line, actually I'm going to go look on these prints here. There's a vent line and there's a pilot line. And a pilot is dashed. An exhaust line has a lot of little dots. Okay? Anytime a doohickey, technical term, <laughs> is different, it means something. They wouldn't have drawn it different if it didn't mean something. The fact that I'm ignorant, by the way, that's one of my favorite words. Ignorant means you don't know. It's not an intelligence statement. You don't know my address. You're ignorant of my address. So your chance of driving there is really hard. You look it up, now you know, right? So when I don't know what a symbol is, I look that up and now I know. Rather than, oh, I thought it meant always plug these. Is that the symbol for a plug? Or is that a symbol for a vent? The machine will behave different. Okay. Uh, there's a thing called a gearbox. It's a metal box. It has a hole for putting oil in, a hole for putting oil out. And it has another hole that has a little drill through it that's called the vent. In a gearbox is oil and air. Air condenses and contracts. Air expands. Gearbox runs hot, and somebody will say, well, they're all quarter-inch plugs. I'm just going to plug that vent. Then they get water, vapor, and other things, and the box destroys itself. Then they're like, well, didn't you notice the little plastic one had a little hole in it? Yeah, but I didn't think that mattered. You do that to a whole fleet of things, and then you keep having cascade problems. It's there for a reason. Okay. Make sense? Anything that's different, they, if they took the time to drill a hole through a bolt, I don't know why, I'm ignorant of why, but I'm going to put it back where it came from. And if the hole is pointing up or sideways, I'm going to put it back the way I saw it. Then I can cover my ignorance by I put the machine back together exactly how I found it. You could say all the keycaps for this keyboard are identical. Maybe they are. 
Even if they're all black and unlabeled, I'm putting them back right where they came from. Every now and then you get something's a little different, now we can't get it together. Because I didn't know something. Maybe one was a locking button and had a mechanism and I moved that cap over. Right? So even the littlest thing, <coughs> details really help. Okay. So then the what I'm gonna do is go up here. And for some reason they like to draw these at angles. And that is a pilot line. And I'll be explaining these in just a moment, once we get our drawing done. Hmm. I shouldn't do that. Then I added an output to it uh, and to the little cup, which is, this is called the reservoir or the drain. And again, we'll label it in a moment. So anyways, um, so here we've got this drawn, and um, you know, it's, it's got all the components. Now let's just go through and, anybody know what this thing is called on this side? What is this called? And if you see, now what you can do, uh, I'm going to give you kind of a, so one of my first, one of my, well, not first jobs, but started at uh, Cray Research. I was going to teach people how to fix crays. And I'm in training, and um, it's just boring as heck. I've had this part. I, mean, I didn't get hired right out of school. I was a tech for many years. and um, It was a boring lecture, so I was falling asleep. And uh, then my boss let me know that might be my last day. I represent the company. Customers are there. Now, I asked a question. I'm going to give you a thought. Now, this is a dialogue. This, These are I will be adding things for you to think about as a worker. Somebody asked, do you know what this is? And everyone went into what I'm going to just call K through 12. I don't answer. So did you get the machine fixed? What would your boss think if you don't answer? You didn't do your job. No, you're not, I'm not even talking to you. I'm just, Tim, did you punch in? Did you load the truck? <laughs> Did you start the line, right? So then what you want to learn is just to say, don't know, right? Rather than be silent, okay? Now, if some of you, if you're, you want to get out of that mode, like, by the way, I'm not in hydraulics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So feel free to say, so yeah. So just say, I don't know yet. Ah, I'm not saying I can't learn. I don't know yet, I haven't learned that symbol saw it once, maybe in the video, right? It's a relief. Anybody got the second word? Valve. Yeah. Would valve. Be, would be considered a pressure reducing valve also? Yeah, valve. that's more complex. That is, okay. It is, but it's got a, it's got a unique function here. It's called our system relief valve. Okay. There's, um, there are fasteners. There are bolts, and then there's hex, allen. There's a whole world of sub or different variations. So they get a different, little different name, okay? So 
system is kind of hard to say. It is the one valve that controls pressure for the whole system. That's why it gets that name. Now I'm going to add something I forgot. Now I'm going to show you, this is not to draw yet. See this little box? Now, what's the problem with my doodling there? You can't really read it. No, because I tried to write in the, now watch, watch the genius brain that came to me after many years. Can you read that better? Watch. Watch the genius. Now it fits in the box. <laughs> you, you do the inside first. <coughs> okay? So I'm going to show you why I'm doing that here. I'm going to do an arrow. Then I'm going to put my circle around it. There's my pressure gauge. However, sometimes I draw the little circle and now I can't make an arrow small enough to fit in. And then I have to always tell you, oh, well, that's, a, that's, that's my pressure indicator. Funny little, that took me years to learn. The other thing I'll point out, I write only in capitals, block letters. It's more readable and legible. Okay, And that's how my handwriting got better because the brain kind of only knows one set of kind of how to write those rather than cursive or some upper and lower case. Okay, so what is this gadget here, the baseball? Anybody remember that? The flow. Yeah. And now we'll kind of do hangman. Starts with an M. Meter. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Now let me tell you something when the, the, the people who are eliciting answers by their brain, this is a learning pedagogy, by risking saying something that could be wrong, they're actually affirming and learning faster because their brain has thought about it. Right? When we actually think and act, then we get feedback. We think we know it, but we never say, then we don't know for sure. This is a filter. Excellent. Look at that. What was this thing? The round circle arrow going out. Yeah. Now, you've used probably a tire pump. You have a lever or a handle. You may have used a hand crank pump. There's something missing. Pumps don't move. And what's missing from here, oddly, is drawn like this. Is the motor. But the hydraulic designer is concerned with the hydraulics and whether we're hooking up a gasoline engine, diesel, electric motor. That doesn't change that. But that's the more accurate way to draw this diagram. Okay? Because if you simply, here's a pump, and if you simply uh, mount it, nothing comes out. You need something to be turning a shaft to make it pump. Right? Here's kind of an interesting thing. See this hole? See this hole? What's the difference? Size. 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 Now, this is a question I don't want to stump you with, so I don't want you to answer, okay? Because I want you to learn something I don't want to, you haven't seen it. There's a difference. This is the drain. This is the pressure side. Now, when we think about it, we have to have a lot more come in to develop pressure, okay? So this is the vent or drain, and this is so this is where it's this is where it's getting the supply of oil to the tank, and this is what's going out to the system. It'll always be the smaller. 
This same gadget looks just in this same box, this same case. You'll see it, and it will have two ports that are the same size. And then you're looking at a hydraulic motor, because there is no pressure difference. Again, well, it looked like a pump to me, so I grabbed it. Well, didn't you notice the one? Well, I just put a coupler on it. We didn't have a coupler when we were running it. I, I get it. I'm, I'm motivated to try and get the machine running. I ran to the parts room. I found a black doohickey thing with some splines. That looks like it fits. This is a pump. And it doesn't work as well as a motor. And vice versa, a motor doesn't pump very well. The bad thing is it might pump some, but doesn't develop the pressure, doesn't give you the flow. Now you think you have another problem. And then somebody looks at it, since you've already, on oh, your worse off, if you can make hoses, now it looks like it was always there. If you don't have a little coupler, we can reduce it. We don't do couplers. It's kind of weird. Why would you put a one inch, what, I'm just calling this one inch. If I'm wrong, just ignore it. But why would they put a one inch here and then go down to a half? Why would you take a one inch wide chain and go down to a 25 bike chain? Why would you have a big belt and try and get it to run a little belt? It, it doesn't usually make sense. Okay. So, you know, normally you don't put four by fours wood underneath a little bird house for a sparrow. Those are the things that I kind of look at when I'm troubleshooting. Um, home plumbing, when do we use a reducer? Oh, we're just going to the ice cube machine. Okay, we just, it has a different function. Otherwise, all your plumbing pipes are whatever size they are. You know, they're, they're one size throughout. They have a little different size, I think, for the bathroom and kitchen, but the, uh, dish, the washing machine and all that, all the main service is one size. And then trailers, they use a whole different quality. They, but they still have the same system, sort of thing. System. You won't really see a little half inch line go to a five inch. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the store and you say, I'd like a quarter inch or a half inch pipe to go to five inch pipe. That, that just makes no sense. The only time you see little holes in pipes is like a quarter inch tap for a pressure uh, gauge, like a sense line. That's the only time you'll see, you'll see a T with this little tiny quarter. Um, okay. So anyways, this is this. What's this thing? Yeah. What is this thing? This is a spring, right? This is an operator. Okay. Now the cylinder has two ends. I don't know if anyone's picked up yet what the two names of the ends are. Anyone hear that yet? The cap end. Yep, the cap. And rod end. Yep, so this is the cap. And this is the rod. And so besides having the assignment complete, now you see why I'm having you be part of this to catch all these other things, okay?
<laughs> yeah, I know. I just. Now, I had one um, student, every now and then, they kept misspelling words. And that's kind of like mispronouncing somebody's name. I'm not a great speller. That's a nice excuse. You have a book that says the word industrial right on it. You could look at the book, right, or the name of the machine you're working on, right, a, a tel terapacker or whatever it is, and you call it something else. Yeah, on the thing we didn't draw the return line. Okay, we'll we'll get back to that. Okay. Well, and we'll do that right now. Okay. Um, where didn't I draw a return line? Oh yeah, yeah, on the DCB, and I thought of that earlier, and I ignored it. Um, now this symbol, this is the reservoir or sometimes just called tank. Okay? Two different, two possible names. The tank is like an electrical common. You don't have to connect everything down to it. I could have brought this line on the left all the way down and over, or I can just show the symbol. The difference being they're saying there, uh, there must be three attachments at the reservoir. If they've meant that it actually ties into a line, as you saw then, can I borrow this again? Sure. This line is showing, oh, we added a manifold, and the manifold goes to tank. So on the tank, there won't be four fittings, okay? But there's a manifold added. A manifold is just, uh, uh, a pipe with holes in it for multiple multiple taps. There's nothing inside of it. Okay. So now we're going to look a little bit how this operates and then we're going to add that to our drawing. Okay. The colors they use are different than what I'm going to show. But what I want to show right now is we've got a pump going that's developing 500 PSI. But when I activate it, the pressure goes way down because the oil is flowing. Okay, But now the pump is pumping. And we can see in the relief valve, the arrow has moved down to where it's flowing. If you look on your pencil drawing, the arrow doesn't line up with the tank, right? If we look at your drawing, it looks, this should be moving up. I don't actually know why it's not. Maybe it's just too quick. There, you see that? It goes up. So there's a force between the spring and the pressure coming in. The pressure coming in is pushing down on the spool. The spring is pushing up on it. And you are setting so much force on the spring that says 200 PSI. Okay? And that is just going in there. What's amazing, these people got away with the simplest inventions ever. They are all the same. What's a relief valve? It's a cylinder, a certain area. When pressure hits it, it produces force and a spring on the side. All the relief valves are variations on that cylinder and spring. New pattern. Yeah. Allen Bradley Corporation, 
their first patent to change motor speed was a thing called a resistor, which stole some energy. That began their empire. Their second invention was a resistor with a hose clamp that you could, it was a wire resistor, and you could adjust the amount of resistance. Huge, because nobody could figure out how to slow down motors. You know, it's kind of nice, to, or uh, easy way to do it. So anyways, so this is going there. Now let's just go back to that simulator for a moment. And if we go here and look at this, we can see that as oil comes in, it pushes over, and as oil returns. Okay? We can see the flow here. What does negative flow mean? Or positive flow? Well, I guess it would probably be which way is my oil going? So it's it's like they're really you we can't tell the bank this, there's no negative numbers, but you can't have a negative five apples. Show them to me. Right? right? It's a mathematical concept. But so in when we see negative in flows or something like that, we're talking a different direction. Direction. Yeah. I'm walking towards you, that's a positive, but for you the distance is going down. Mm -hmm. You know? Now I'm still just moving. I'm getting negative space. Yep. Now you're getting positive space as I go this way. And it's just a way to define it. Rather than, well, it's moving. Well, what do you mean by moving? Well, it's moving closer. To which one? Positive negative numbers help. The, the machine is moving negative down towards the part. It's moving positive, it's moving away. However the designer developed it. Okay. So now the second part is to make a drawing instantly relatable. And I'm going to add um, something here. And this is why sometimes I leave room. I'm going to add a parenthesis or a little contact or a smiley face and a frowny face. Okay? Now, then I'm going to draw a diagonal arrow through it. And this is called a needle valve. Its symbol, I think, comes from the idea of stepping on a hose. When you smush it, you reduce the diameter and pinch the flow. Now I'm going to draw another gadget underneath it. And the idea is here, I want to put it in parallel, but I'm going to give myself some room. So I'm going to go out, go down, go over, draw like a V. I'm not going to draw it right next to it, but I'm going to draw a ball. My ball didn't kind of end up in the middle. Okay. I'm going to have to share with you there for a moment. Okay. 
and you've got the three. Okay. Now, um, this is kind of the uh, structure area, so we really don't like self-service here, but ask and you'll get another one. Um, why is that? It just means we know when to order. You know, we kind of, there you go. There's a, don't sharpen it now, but there's a sharpener in the corner, okay? Yeah. So, um, now, the first thing we're going to do is just label some things. Uh, they could go anywhere. I'm just going to label it um, up here. I'm going to say that's for extend. Blue, I'm going to make return. The colors don't matter. It just matters we tell the reader which they are. And then the green I labeled supply. So now we're going to start with the cylinder again. To extend the cylinder, would oil come in the cap end or the rod end? Cap end. Cap end. Yep. Now you also see by labeling it how easy it is for you to know which end I'm talking about. The more prints are labeled, the less confusion. Yeah, you should know everything. Yeah. Nobody bats a thousand. Okay, so I'm going to cheat and start here. I don't want to draw above the con I don't want to draw on the conductor. I want to draw above it or below it. So I'm going to draw a red line like this. And I'm even going to add an arrow, just because I'm kind of new to hydraulics and it kind of reminds me which way the oil's going. Now, where is the oil coming from? It does, but does it come from here or here? Your pressure on the, the top. See, we didn't label these, right? But these are called in, out, A, and B. And these are sometimes also called P or T, the inputs. Different manufacturers use those names. So now, is oil coming in the P in, or is the oil coming from the T out? P in. So how did it get to A? The DCV must have been in what position? This top position, or this position? Top, and then this arrow would be like this. Make sense? Because that's the only way the oil could have gone out to the A port. Okay? Now, I'm going to cheat and make up a, uh, my own symbol, because I want to kind of distinguish um, the... I guess I don't know why I do this. It just seems more legible. Okay? Um, the returning oil, I'm going to draw like this. And again, I might draw an arrow. Right? But I'm just drawing a little dash line. But I'm br it's not part of the schematic. It's part of my notes. Okay? So it's not a standard symbol. Okay? Um, I want you to stop at the needle valve. I don't want you to try and go through it yet. We're just going to hold up there.
in hydraulics and electrical and um, uh, pneumatics, they often have two sets of symbols, a simplified symbol and a more complex symbol. The simplified says, oh, this is a regulator, goes on your grill. Well, there's different springs in there, maybe vents and ports, and they don't want to show that. They're just giving you a simple symbol. Doesn't mean it's that simple inside, okay? So a check valve, actually, this is the simplified symbol, and the complex symbol would show there's a spring pushing the ball to the left. That's how it knows to only let oil go one way. Okay, you can draw that in if you like, and you'll see them drawn both ways. Thank you so much. Okay. So now, when we come down here, the spring is pushing this thing in what direction? Okay. It provides a force that way. Sorry, Bert. Right? Okay. Don't know what that was. Glad somebody didn't yell. Yeah. Um, so, can oil go through in this direction? No. So that forces the red to go this way. Now, technically, you could argue the red is here. It certainly is, but it's not getting out. Excuse me, Tim. You bet. No, go ahead. I just, he was on the phone. <laughs> now, what's the direction? Are we going towards the DCV or away from it? So now, how do we, we must be going through this line, right? Now we're going to take blue. do the same, how would we make this cylinder retract? Would oil come in the rod or the cap end? So then the oil has to be going this way, right? Which means we must be coming out B. Now we stop at the check valve. While we could go through the needle valve, the majority of the flow is going to go through the check valve. So go ahead and draw that part in. So I mentioned to some that we have to learn, kind of get rid of the uh, common thoughts people think or have been told. Solenoid is a relay really in a car, not a solenoid starter. Okay. Um, electricity follows the path of least resistance. That's a bit. When you see the squirrel being cry, touch that power line. There's, there's plenty of energy for you. Okay. It follows all paths. What that phrase means is where there's the least resistance, the majority of the rhythm will flow. But if you add a little tap, it'll go down there as well. Okay? So 
I'm not saying that it couldn't be possible that oil won't go through the needle valve. It depends on how much is it closed, how much is it open in this blue direction. But certainly, the majority will be going through the check valve. Doesn't that depend on the strength of the spring as well, though? It does, and that's a very interesting thing. There are hydraulic check valves and pneumatic check valves that have a guesstimated pressure that they need to operate. And somebody sees a check valve and they take one from hydraulics and stick it in air circuit and maybe it never opens. Then there's low pressure hydraulics and really high pressure and they have check valves. The springs are really stout. We can build up in just these hoses you're using 50 to 100 PSI of just resistance. So it can eat that much pressure through a long line or not even that six foot. Um, so there's funny little things. So it does, but it's been designed to work with typical values. So while that is a true, if we started at a half PSI, and one PSI, we'd see it would never open. But normal operation shop air is 80 PSI or 20, 40 to a machine, and it opens up that. But that's a really good thing to talk in your head. Now you get a, um, maybe in packaging, you get really tiny pneumatics to do fast labeling things. The smaller the cylinder, the quicker it fills with oil or air. So you want to put 800 labels per minute? I mean, you need an ocean wave to type of velocity you'd have to generate. So they get really tiny parts. Those check valves are probably expecting something different. And then you again, you'd have to couple eighth inch or 332nd hose to a half inch. Something's wrong there. You know. If it came with a 332nd thread for bringing in the hose, it's not expecting a large one, and vice versa. So, um, so anyways, now we come back out, do the same sort of thing. Oh, and how did oil ever get out B? It would have had to been this top one, right? I missed that, but anyways. In the DCV, it should be. <laughs> hey, good morning. Now, if we wanted, we could, and we don't normally ask for this, we could normally show supply like this. So the green's possible. Now, usually on a large set of prints, one of the first things that's been traditional in training is coloring your prints. Okay. Right now, a customer calls and says, you know what? This thing will not extend at all. Now I'm going to give you a, a little teaching and control for a moment. Okay. I'm going to say, they call up, and then I don't want anyone to answer, and here's why. For a person to produce an answer takes over 15 seconds. If some know it, then they won't have thought, and you've stolen that chance for them to think about it. Okay. So I'll call or I'll give the answer out in 15 seconds. So the symptom is, this is the machine. The customer says the thing won't extend. I was able to attack it, but it won't extend. I want you to think what might be one failure. Give a little bit of time. Or two failures. Thoughts. Yeah. Is it plugged in? Is it plugged in? Is the motor running? Right? But they were able to retract. So would that have been consistent? Maybe, maybe not, right? So is the cap and stuff? Oh no, it's it was a working system and now it's failed. Gotcha. Right? So let me give that scenario. The DCB? What part of the DCB? So that would be the uh, top part of the the straight arrow part? Yeah. Maybe there's something clogged in there, right? 
some debris. Uh, one thing hydraulic circuits don't ever want is Teflon tape. That gets in there. The clearances on spools and things are tiny, tiny, tiny. Okay, like one, uh, like three fortieths of a speck of dust. 40 microns is a speck of dust you can see, and some of the clearances and bells are six microns. Pumps even tighter. So they don't want Teflon tape floating around. Um, and where does it go? If you're lucky, it goes to the tank. But what does the tank do? Pump it and send it around again. And eventually it gets in some component. So what else might be a cause? You know what else goes down? What if somebody had turned this 100% closed? You were able to find that fairly quick because the red line goes through there. See, that's the beauty of having a print. Nobody named the check valve because red doesn't go through the check valve. The check valve could be plugged 100%. Doesn't matter for extension. So having prints that are color coded give us a quick way to start looking at it. Otherwise, it's like solving a math problem or everything you have to go all over. If you had prints and knew you got 16 inch centers and you knew where this, you can quickly find the next one. But if you didn't have prints, do you cut off the sheet lock and see where, the, where it is? Do you test every <coughs> two inches? You have to redevelop all that knowledge. Where if you've gone through prints, you can quickly find it, okay? So that certainly could be a problem, right? Okay. Or it could be something in here. It can't really be here. Could it be our pump? Could be. No. If they retracted. Yes or no? It retracted. Well, my question on the retraction is if there's no power, which the pump's not working. Oh, that was that was one thought. I, I turned the power back on. Okay. I, I said, so, very good. Very good. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, if there's no power, it's not retracted. It's, it's going to retract. retract. It's well, going to retract when you when you when you open the switch. Well, the valve. no, because there's no pressure being there's no flow by the pump, so then there's no way to push it. If, there's no if the spray. pressure was already released. Yeah. And now we want to also get rid of this this idea of pressure. This thing produces flow. Does not produce pressure. And everybody calls the pump makes the pressure. The obstacle makes pressure. Okay. So if there is no flow, and here's just, you know, here's a pneumatic version, roughly that's sta standing still. So far is I'm lifting the air over here up and I'm lifting the mass of this. Okay? So there's a certain amount of ability of the pump. The pump has a rating on it called pressure. What it means is when, pr when the fluid can go backwards through it. It means I can withstand 5,000 PSI. So I think these pumps in our hydraulics are either 3,500 or 5,000. That's the spec. It's saying I can withstand 3,500 trying to come back through me. But with a one horse motor, I can only produce 600 PSI. It's a function of lift. Right? My bicep determines what I can lift. It's not a math equation. The other thing about math equations, I want to change a thought in you. None of these are variables. We think they are because we were taught that in algebra or something like that. They aren't. We know the size of the cylinder the machine is built. We know the pump. All that's been predetermined. They were only variables when it was being designed. And even that was achieved because at one point they had to declare, look man, we got a one pump, we got a one horsepower motor or a three. Well, I need 1.75. I told you, I sell a one and a three. I guess I'll take the three. So they're not variables, they are constants because they've been picked. Okay? There's no way you're getting 200 PSI in your water pressure at home. The water system is set up for about 30, typical. You just can't do that. You don't have a pump that's going to give you that. And then you need a motor to be able to produce the muscle to be able to lift that. So, okay. So that's the idea of drawing prints. Make sense? Okay. Now, um, I want to show you an example. This is the assignment seven. 
The only difference is you're going to draw it on your own, and you have to run two cylinders in parallel. Okay. This does not show the relief valve and the other stuff. This is a completed one. Next time I might say, I might tell you, well, let's add that. Why do we do it? You're learning the symbols, what they are, rather than trying to read them in a table of book and memorize them. Now, you graduate. I had this interview in San Francisco. I was at a high-tech firm, and they pointed to things, and I didn't know. I was going to be an engineer a technician, engineering tech. The more they pointed that I didn't know, guess what was happening to my chance of getting hired? So we never going to draw it because it saves time. And then you graduate and they say, what's this thing? What's this? Um, um. So you want to be familiar. I know it's some sort of pressure valve. That's a better answer than I you know I've never seen it before. And you took hydraulics. Interviews are usually very, very simple because we find that out. Right? What would you frame a, a wall with? I, I'd get some lumber. I'd expect the word 2 by 4 or 2 by 6 If you did that, you would be doing that, right? What size is sheetrock? I would expect it to be sheetrocked. You would know the sizes. They come in any size you want. You got a lot of experience? You ordering custom sheetrock? And even like fabric, I was going to make a tent one time, and I called a mill out in New York, or uh, uh, Massachusetts. They only make 13 feet wide. That's how, that's why carpets, the, the machine is only so big. Sorry, you're going to have to, we're not building you a machine, I mean, we're not building you a machine for a 50 foot carpet. Right. Uh, and, I mean, you better be a sheik of uh, Saudi or something to say, well, here's an extra 12 million to build me one plant to make my one carpet. And even most companies will walk away because we're going to invest time and people and lose our main core. Go somewhere else. It's, it's, it's just too hard. You know, like Russell and Dairy, start making uh, candy bars. <laughs> we're not, that's not what we do. We're not going to scrap all this. So, anyways, that was the idea of this. Worth doing. Make sense? Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Eleven o'clock is lunchtime. Feel free to take lunch. Okay. Eleven to twelve, and then uh, resume in the afternoon. Now, when I say that, I've been getting wrong. Look at your own schedule that you're assigned. Okay. So, I we had one person only taking one day a week, four hours, and I told me I had to be here all week. Uh, so. So I think you guys are eight hour days, right? Yeah. I'm four. Four, yep. Now, while it's four, um, you certainly can take lunch, you can take shorter, you can stay longer, okay? Um,